And you are back here on Open. Our next guest has lifestyle subjects in a number of media networks, including CBS, ABC, NBC News, affiliates all across the country. He's here today to discuss his new book, I'm Still Here. And we welcome author and style expert George Worrell. And uh, Thank you. good to have you. Good to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Looking at a picture of style today? Yeah, and so are you. Well, thank you. you that know. tie, and I checked out your socks, so you're definitely, definitely on. You know, it's warm outside. We have to look a little warm. <laughs> bring out the bright colors good to have you thank you so much so, i appreciate it so let's talk about this here you, you know you're a fashion expert mm -hmm. um but the truth of the matter is you're also an author and mm -hmm. you're authoring a book that's coming out and it drops in august called yeah. i'm still here i'm still here so give us a little history and i i believe that it's a continuation from my first book which is on the other side of style mm -hmm. and that started out um chronicling uh fashion mm -hmm. but then i had to think about when did i first get that feeling about fashion and it was at a, as a little kid mm -hmm. so that meant it turned into a memoir and you know seeing my parents my grandparents have a certain style a certain flair I developed a love of fashion and knew what to look for how to identify well-made clothes mm -hmm. as opposed to the brands so um, I, I enjoyed it and I enjoyed the journey I took it from my journey mm -hmm. and from my journal and wrote on the other side of style which um was just pretty good pretty good so you write a little bit about homeless yeah drug well it's homeless. about okay so when people think about fashion they think just about your clothes right. but it's just so much more than that darren it's where you work where you live what you eat you know what you think the people that you have around you mm -hmm. so you know i grew up in the upper class middle class family and you know both of my parents have been married 56 years these things that were in my journey weren't supposed to happen to me mm -hmm. i was in college and soon left and i found myself uh, drug addicted alcohol addicted homeless at one point for about 10 years but what kept me i think alive were my dreams mm -hmm. because i grew up in a town or a time that what I thought, who I was, and what interested me didn't interest other people. So I felt alone. Mm -hmm. So that meant I went to things that I thought that could kind of suppress that feeling. Mm -hmm. And I found out I felt worse, but I still dreamed. So, you know, about 10, 12 years, um, I got clean in 1995. And I've never looked back. I started my own business. I started doing it my way, the right. things that I felt uh, should be happening in my life. What do you want people to take away from the book? What I want people to take away from the book is that to think and that your journey is yours and that to get something from the inside, like my grandmother used to say, your first mind, mm -hmm. meaning if you're walking this way and something says innately don't walk that way and then you go ahead and say, hey, I'm going to walk that way and then something happens. Mm -hmm. You've missed that opportunity when something said not to. Right. So it's to do the things that are comfortable, even in fashion. When you come to me or you come to anyone in fashion, you should already know yourself, your body, all of those things. Mm -hmm. I should be the person that just gets it for you or maybe have some suggestions to tweak it. Yeah. Yeah. So the first book was on the other side of style. It's a mm -hmm. memoir. This new book is I'm Still Here. And so when you look at the difference between the first book and the second book, uh, what, what, what did you say, I, I want to really attack this time? The continuation of the journey, mm -hmm. um, that it still happens. You know, at 49, I decided to leave Washington, D.C., where I'd been for 18 years. And I woke up one morning, and I literally moved in a month. And I don't know if I was financially prepared to do that, but it was a strong gut feeling. Martin Luther King said this one time, the time is now. Mm -hmm. You will know when the time is now to change, to do whatever it is that you're doing. I sold my furniture. I sold trinkets, mm -hmm. you know, the valuable things. And I took my savings and I moved. I found a place on Craigslist in Harlem. Uh, it took me a little while to find a job, but I did. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm here. I'm still here in, on the journey. Right. So hopefully people will get from the book to inspire themselves, whether if it's to change your hairstyle, to move to another city, to do another job, a job you've been working for 20 years, you don't particularly like, but you're just doing it for money, but to take your passion and to say, you can live and make money on your passion. 
That's awesome. And so now you have George Worrell LLC. So uh, now that you have the business, tell us a little bit about it. Well, the business is, you know, I wrote the book. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go on a tour, a speaking tour. I want to go to colleges. I want to talk to young people. I want to go to corporate America. On that other side of it, we have where we come in and do seminars to corporate America, dress for success. So that means when you're going to an interview, you don't wear the clothes that you wear to the club. Right. You wear things. You, you know, you, you have to be able to fit your audience. You know, people think, you know, I'm, I want to just be me. Yes, you can be me, but you have to be able to fit that mold. You have to be an actor. You really do. Mm -hmm. So that you make your clients or the people that you are engaging comfortable so that they feel that they will, they will impart in you. Mm -hmm. So then when you receive all of that, then you can go on and do your thing. Do you know what I mean? Because exactly. you, you, you're going to need all of that resource. So what's, what's the most common mistake that people make with regards to that? in dressing, mm -hmm. that they don't know enough about themselves. Mm -hmm. um, you should know your body. Everybody's different. Do you know, I'm thin. Um, I've always been thin, so I don't wear clothes that are not tapered. But I also wear things age appropriate. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, you know, if you're 70, you know, and all this long hair, that's not going to go. Or men who, you know, just... You're living a legend in your mind. So help me to understand this. So when we go outside and we see people right out during the hot weather, mm -hmm. and we see more and not less, what are people actually telling us? For me, I think it's a level of insecurity or your advertising that you want something from someone else that you should be giving yourself. Mm. Do you know, it's inner. I have this course that I teach. It's called the three phases of style. It's inner outer and then your clothes. Your clothes should always be last. So it depends how you feel about yourself. Do you love yourself? Do you, you love others? All of these things. And then how I grew up, it's your hair, your skin, your teeth. Like I said, the last thing is your clothes. You don't have to go to the high-end stores to look well or to dress well. You need to train your eye to identify well-made clothes. You can go to Marshalls. Lomas is not open anymore. But any place, like, this is what I love about 125th Street right. or, or the Bronx or Indian. All of these stores like Jimmy Jam, all those places, it's about going in and identify if something is well made and that it fits your body type and that it looks good on you. And you make it work. And you make it work. George Worrell, how do people get in touch with you? You can get in touch with me at info at George Worrell Style. That's the same as my website, George Worrell Style mm -hmm. dot com. And I'll be happy to talk to anyone. Great. And the book? The book, I'm Still Here, I'm Still Here, Darren. All righty. Well, thank you so much for thank coming to share. Good to have you on the show. Thank you. All righty. Well, guess what? We've got to take a quick break.